Okay, so good morning, everybody. The food additives, when we say food additives, means uh, the product or the elements that we add to a particular food product to increase uh, its shelf life. That is one. To increase, uh, to give the color to a particular food product. That is two. To increase the sweetness of the product. That is three. Uh, to increase the texture of the product. and to in improve the overall appearance of the food product so whatever is added to enhance these elements they are known as food additives and most of the time these food additives are added to the packed product not uh, to the fresh product so first we will be talking about some preservatives which are added to a food product to increase the shelf life and on the screen you can see some of the uh, additives which will be added to a particular food product uh, when it is being packed to increase the shelf life and these are as follows first one is sorbic acid now what is sorbic acid uh, uh, it is an acid that will uh, slow down the growth of uh, yeast and mold into a particular food product and it will increase the shelf life of the product and it can be used in yogurts sweets soft drinks frozen pizzas desserts and fillings so most of the frozen food product uh, they use sorbic acid you can find it on to the label of a particular food product sodium potassium and calcium salts are some relative preservatives which can be added instead of sorbic acid next we have benzoic acid it is antibacterial and antifungal action that by which the food product uh, can be stored for a longer time and the product like jams jellies desserts juices marmalades and fruits they use this particular uh, preservative propyl 4 hydroxy benzoate it's um, antimicrobial um, antimicrobial in nature and it can be found in desert sauces fruit pulp purees and pickles sulfur dioxide niacin nitrate sodium nitrate acetic acid propionic acid so these are some of the preservatives and you can see their properties and their uses and their uh, relative uh, related preservatives the point is when we were discussing the individual food product we found that they have written uh, you know uh, so, something like acetic acid or somewhere added preservatives so th- when they say added preservative they are not specifying onto the label at what preservative they have added but they must have added you know either you know, one of them or some other preservatives uh, into the food product which will increase the shelf life but definitely all the product which have a particular shelf life for example 7 uh, days or 15 days or 20 days or 6 month or 1 year or 2 year so that means uh, a preservative has been added to that particular food product that uh, no that will increase the shelf life of the product uh, after food preservatives one more thing is added to various food product and that is known as colors so various kind of colors are to be added into the food product and they can be classified into two categories so one is dyes and one are lakes so let's understand what are dyes and what are lakes dyes dissolve in water and are manufactured as powder granule liquid or special purpose forms they can be used in beverages dry mixes baked good confectionery dairy product pet food and a variety of other food product okay so the the point is that dyes are soluble in water okay on the other hand lakes are the water insoluble form of the dyes lakes are more so- stable than dyes and are ideal for coloring product containing fats and oils okay so overall we can define it like dyes are used in the product uh, in which water is the base and lakes are used in the product where the fat is the base okay so how can we uh, no identify so if i am making a 
making a you know set up okay let's say this monin therapy if i am making and i'm if i want to give this color so they have said that they have uh, added permitted synthetic food color that is e133 so this particular food food color is is a kind of dye because the base of the the bottle or the syrup is water and dyes are soluble in water on the other hand if we talk about amunis okay so amunis the base is fat so in that particular uh, product where amunis is being made uh, it will be the lakes which will give color so dyes for the water soluble and lakes for the fat soluble product okay so these are two types of colors uh then we have natural colorants okay so these colors are naturally available in various uh, food uh, fruits and uh, uh, flowers okay we will discuss them uh, yes dipanchu excuse me sir uh, you have told in the previous slide that uh, dyes are not uh, soluble in the uh, fats for example you take an example of mayonnaise hmm. so if we add dye in a mayonnaise so sir it, uh, i think that it is easily mixable so it will easily take the color of the dye dye dyes are water soluble and lakes are fat soluble okay i'll go back to the slide dyes dissolve in water lakes they dissolve in any fat solution so when you are making a mayonnaise the the base uh, is fat okay so you are taking some kind of fat to make mayonnaise as you uh, as somebody read the label of a mayonnaise there was fat as a base okay there was no water the fat was a base and in case of a syrup the base is water that's why natural color uh, has been added into the syrup right dipanchu yes sir okay so there are natural colorants uh, available and they can be extracted from various fruits and flowers okay so these are the examples anthocyanin these are very important uh, no uh, elements or natural colorants uh, it imparts blue violet and certain red color to many edible fruits and vegetables okay so anthocyanin uh anthocyanin is also uh, present in the skin of uh, red grapes so the red col uh, color of the wine is because of uh, the pigment present in the grapes uh, skin that is anthocyanin carotenoids and xanthophyll these are carotenoids uh, are oil soluble colors so xanthophyll comprise a group of yellow carotenoid pigment the most important commercial carotenoids are beta carotene okay so most of uh, the yellow color food product they use xanthophyll uh, you know to color their product bixa orlana then have we have betalain caramel and curcumin so caramel you know it's a natural color so it uh, lots of rum and whiskies are colored with the caramel Bixa orlana is uh, also known as acute is a shrub native to central america bixa orlana is grown in many countries worldwide the tree is best known as a source of anato a natural orange red condiment obtained from the waxy arils that covers its seed so a uh, layer is there over the seed of this particular flower so so that, that layer is to be taken out and the colors is to be extracted so the point is that all these uh, natural colors are either uh, you no know, extracted from the flowers or fruits okay in some manner then plant tissue cultures these are also used uh, in uh, many food product to color their product uh for example anato it is an yellow carotenoid preparation obtained from the seed of the plant bixa or lena saffron color can be given by dicarboxylic carotenoid crocetin is found in saffron together with its digestive solution ester crocin so some technical terms will be coming cochineal is a uh, is a color 
that is obtained from uh, uh, that is obtained from yarnic acid okay and the color is red alkanet is related pigment extracted with alcohol from the roots of alkana tincotria tosh that's a that's a that's a plant so from its root this particular pigment is extracted uh, various colors uh, no uh, which are commonly used uh, as a form of additives in various food product so for red poncin 4r carmosin erythrocin for yellow color tetragene sunset yellow fcf uh, are added for blue color indigo carmine and brilliant blue fcf and for green color uh, fast green uh, food color okay so fcf is basically food color so that is added into various products now apart from the color sweeteners are also to be added as we have seen you no know, while checking various food products so there are some form of sugars are also to be added so sugars can be classified into these three categories uh, the low sweetener categories and uh, the medium sweetener categories and uh, the high sweetener categories so let's see what are these categories okay so first we'll go for non calorie sweeteners they are synthetic in nature and saccharin sucralose and dulcin are most uh, the the common example of uh, non caloric sweetener okay now when we talk about all these three saccharin and sucralose and dulcin saccharin is the most common uh, sweetener that is added to the food product and it is it is believed that it is not good for the teeth okay so while buying a particular food product when you when you buy uh, ice cream okay so now they have they are trying to add natural sweeteners into the uh, food product but uh, saccharin if it is there it it is not good for the consumption and that is non calorie sweetener that means that they are the sugar is synthetically being produced then we have non calorie sweeteners and which are natural okay so these are good for the particular food product uh, they are neo hefridin dc glycosin and phyllo dulcin okay so these are natural non caloric sweeteners then we have a category of non protein non caloric sweeteners and they are natural so stevi uh, steviocytes thomatin timin curculin monalin uh, miraculin brajelin and dicoriophyllum cuminici okay so these are some form of sweeteners on the other hand we have caloric sweeteners which are sucrose fructose glucose lactose invert sugar caramel and high fructose syrup so in uh, you must have heard the names of these sugars and when these sugars goes to technical name that's what we have discussed uh, just now so in natural english we can call them these names with these names sorbitol mannitol uh, lecithol maltitol xylitol and sacramate uh, elitame and aspartame okay so these are common sweeteners which you can find in a particular food product uh, which increases the shelf life of the food product and gives a sweetness to the food product and then we have uh, additives uh, category that is emulsifiers and stabilizers so emulsifiers and stabilizers so stabilizers give stability to a particular food product so a food product when it looks in a particular shape the texture and everything it comes with the stabilizers and emulsifiers are are the additives uh, which helps to bind a particular food product to so water and oil and various other compounds okay they are to be binded with the help of emulsifiers and some examples are uh, excudates uh, it is uh, the, the example of excudates are gum arabic gum prankanth gum karaya gum gatti extract uh, agar alginate pectin collagenin flours can also be uh, additive and uh, guar gum lokum bean gum 
synthetic uh, in one of the product uh, i believe when we were reading the labels of uh, various food product we saw that flour has been added okay and th there was some soya bean flour also okay so these all act as an uh, stabilizers then in synthetic we have xanthan gum it is very uh, commonly used in various food product and then chemical uh, emulsifier and stabilizers are carboxy methyl cellulose methyl cellulose hydroxy and propyl methyl cellulose the last category of uh, uh, food additives uh, is antioxidants and antioxidant uh, are have the, these uh, chemicals or these compounds have properties to keep the oxygen away so one of the most important type of uh, deterioration that occur in a food stuff is the oxidation of the fats to produce unpleasant odor uh, which can be detected at low levels by the human senses so that can be avoided uh, when we use these various polyphenols uh, xanthones can be used lignans can be used uh, shalcones can be used cumarins uh, can be used okay so these are there are various uh, forms of antioxidant they can be used to increase the shelf life of a particular food product so overall we have understood that uh, if we summarize uh, what are food additives so we can say these are uh, various uh, you know uh, elements which are to be added to a particular food product they can be in the form of uh, they can be in the form of color they can be in the form of flavor they can be in the form of antioxidant emulsifier stabilizers okay and the reason they are to be added is to increase the shelf life of the food product to increase the texture of the food product to increase the flavor of the food product to increase the uh, to, to enhance the sweetness of the food product so that is what uh, the meaning of uh, food additive is so with this any questions are there please ask